This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. You got people who are alive today, think they're so smart, think they know everything. Oh, would love to debate with you and have these, these theological debates and all that other kind of stuff. None of that matters. Because what I'm talking about, you, every eye going to see. All we got to do is wait till you die. And you'll see I was right. And I tell you right now, I'm right. You wrong. And we'll see. Do you think you can afford to take that chance? Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. I'm going to start a, a, a series that uh, it's going to sound a little awkward, but I'm going to talk about the, tonight and next week the reality of heaven and hell. And the reason why I believe the Spirit of God, He spoke this to my heart. He says, I want you to teach on the reality of heaven and hell. And I thought, well, well why? Because when you talk about hell, that is a message to unbelievers. And so I'm going to deal with hell tonight. <laughs> and just so, you, just so you can take good notes so you can minister to unbelievers. But this is not for you. Let me please make sure I, you understand something. If, if you have been born again and you, you have made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are heaven bound. You are heaven bound. But if you are not born again and you're not a believer, uh, listen very carefully tonight. We hope we can change your mind. Amen? And so, Father, we do praise you. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you that uh, these words will come out correctly with love, and we give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, as we begin, right before I get into this, let's, I, want, I want to just show you a lot of times people you know, they come to the conclusion that certain things don't exist because it's not really kind of like preached about enough. And, it, you know, and when it's not ministered, it's not in a person's mind, and so they just kind of think it doesn't exist, or they start listening to people who don't know what they're talking about, and you absorb what they say. So before I really get started, I want to turn to the Scriptures and I want to I want to share some some things with the scripture, show you some things in the scripture, just about some of the things it says. Let's go to Matthew chapter thirteen forty two. I want to look at six scriptures and then I'll get started. So remember, this is the reality of heaven and hell, and you're going to learn something about both existences. But you're going to be grateful that you made a decision to get born again. You have all life to make one decision, and that is decision to make. Jesus, the Lord of your life. So this is a part of our understanding series, and certainly this is something that every new member needs to get a hold of. Matthew chapter 13, 42, and just listen how this goes, 13, 42. He says, and, and, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, now, he's talking about, again, unbelievers. They'll be cast into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's very interesting. What do you do with that scripture? Do you tear it up and throw it away? Well, now let's go to this next scripture I want you to see, Matthew 10, 28. 
Matthew 10 and 28. And these are just scriptures that you can use and, and look at. He says, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. So here again, it makes reference to uh, hell. And, and for people who don't believe in it, 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 the scripture is very clear about making reference over and over again that there is a hell. We live in a generation now where they don't believe in the heaven or hell. So I want to take time to show you the, the reality of this. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2 and 4. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. Now notice here he says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but he cast them, notice the direction, down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now listen what this scripture says. This scripture says that God did not spare those angels that sinned. Those, you remember that whole war in heaven? And those angels that rebelled against God, God did not spare those angels that sinned, but he cast them down to hell. You're going to find out that hell was not created for us. It was created for fallen angels. It was created for the devil and those fallen angels. But that was a place that was created for the rebellious angels. And Satan, of course, was an archangel. So every rebellious angel, there was a place that was created for them. And he says, they were put in the chains of darkness, cast them down to hell. So it's a literal place. It's a literal place. It was not originally created for men. Let's go to Psalms 9, 17. Look at a couple more scriptures, and then we need to locate this. Psalms 9, verse 17. He says, the wicked shall be turned, where? Into hell. And all the nations that forget God will be turned into hell. But remember, the original purpose for it was not for mankind. Look at Mark chapter 9, verse 43. Mark chapter 9 and verse 43, he says, and if, they, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. So there's, there's, there's too many references that are making reference to that place. And so let's, let's see if we can locate it. Ephesians chapter 4 and 9. Ephesians chapter 4 and 9. This is interesting. He says, now that he ascended, now referring to Jesus, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended? Remember, he sent the, those, arch, those angels down. He descended first, watch this, into the lower parts of the earth. So he just, you know, this scripture tells us that this is located in the lower parts of the earth. It was created for all fallen angels and demonic forces, the lower parts of the earth. And of course, Jesus went to hell, the lower parts of the earth, for three days and three nights, okay? And the lower parts of the earth. So um, we know where it is. We know exactly where it is. It, it is in the lower parts of the earth, or Hades. Now, what I'm about to show you is something in Luke chapter 16, which was an actual event that took place. Uh, go to Luke 16, and when you get to Luke 16, and this is where I want to spend the majority of my time tonight, Luke chapter 16, I just want to give you those scriptures. And one of the reasons why I, it's important for you to get these scriptures is because when it comes to heaven, most people believe in it. And most people believe that they're going there. <laughs> On the other hand, while some people believe in hell, most don't think they're going there. Now, you're, you're living in a very interesting time now. You're living in a very interesting time well, there are people that don't believe in God. They don't believe in the devil. They don't believe in hell. They don't believe in heaven. And, you know, they can live like hellions and tell them, what do you think is going to go when you die? I'm going to heaven. <laughs> well, is Jesus Lord of your life? Who? <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right, so let's look at this real carefully. Luke 16, uh, and let's begin at verse um, 19. Luke 16 and verse 19. 
Are you there? All right, now let's, let's break this down. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously. Now, the first thing that got my attention here is that the Bible said there was a certain rich man, which means he's not, he's not making this story up. There's, there was actually this guy existed. There was a certain rich man, a particular one, a specific man, a certain rich man. And he said he was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar. And then, this is interesting, he said there was a certain beggar, and he gave the name, this beggar's name. So we're not talking about some made-up fable. We are actually referring to to certain people, very specific situation, as he begins to give us insight on this. And then he said, and, and, the, and the beggar's name was Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and they licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. His name is what? Lazarus, the beggars died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosoms. Now, this is very interesting. Remember, this is a situation that took place before Jesus uh, was born and before Jesus had died. And you've got to understand what happened. The, the hell was divided up into two compartments. And between the bottom part and the top part was this great gulf which kept people from crossing over. And so the upper regions of hell was referred to as Abraham's bosoms. This is the place where all of those who were in covenant with God were there until Jesus came to set the captives free. All right? Okay, so on the other side or the lower part of, of uh, hell was where, uh, you know, wicked men... Uh, men who were not in covenant or didn't believe God, it's where they, they went, okay? All right, now, so now you understand here when he said uh, that he died and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosoms. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell. The rich man died was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Now, I want you to count the number of times the word torment appears. He lifted up his eyes, being in torment. He seeth, and notice the senses that were working. Both of these guys are dead. But when you die, your physical body stays on the, on, on, goes back to the dust of the ground of the earth, but your spirit and soul goes with you wherever you are. If your soul didn't go, you wouldn't be able to recognize people. Your spirit and your soul. All right, now watch this. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosoms. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. <laughs> the nerve of this guy. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Now, that, that, Lazarus ain't doing that no more. <laughs> For I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, so life is over, they're now in eternity. Remember in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. And then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So he was just saying, like, look, dude, just, you know, somebody go and tell them this is all real. 
You know, I didn't know this was all real, but now I'm here. I need somebody to go warn everybody else. And we think, wow, that would be a pretty good idea, right? And there's a lot of things happen because actually when Jesus rose from the dead, these folks who were in the upper regions of Sheol got up too. The Scripture says that some people in the city saw their relatives who had died walking in the city. Uh, Y'all better watch out because maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, just a little bit I have. I can't prove this. You can't disprove this. But I know God's love is so strong. And maybe, just maybe before this, this rapture comes that he might just let you see somebody that was gone just at a last attempt to say this is real, get it right. All right, now watch this now. All right, we're reading the Scripture, right? Don't go on talking about Rem Dollar said it. No, we read. We, this is reading 101. <laughs> Rem Dollar ain't said nothing. We just read. Verse 29, And Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses. They got the prophets. They got Creflo to him. Let them hear them. I ain't sending nobody back from the dead. Because you know what would happen when nobody believed it. I've come from the dead to tell you, now is time to get saved. Oh, it's a trick. You ain't from no dead. What circus you work for? They wouldn't believe it anyway. And he knew that. And he said, nay, Father, Abraham, but if one went from the dead, they will repent or change their mind. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. That's a strong indictment. So what are the things we see here? I'll share about four or five things we see here just in this verse of Scripture. Number one, people in hell suffer. <laughs> people in hell suffer. The rich man uses the term torment three times. In, 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 the, in this parable, and Abraham used it once. And so it's clear that the rich man is in real pain, not imagined pain, not symbolic pain. He's in real pain, number one. Number two, once you're in hell, you cannot cross over to heaven. <laughs> well, if I go to hell, I'll just, you know, change my mind and cross over. No, no, once you're in hell, you can't cross over. You have to understand something. Uh, there's nothing more permanent than you dead. <laughs> you ever heard dead as a doorknob? <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. This is the dressing up room right now. And you only need to get dressed up one kind of way. I believe Jesus. And so what happens is, is that we have thousands of opportunities to decide our future destination. But once our physical life ends, there are no more chances. The believer enters heaven while the non-believer enters hell. And that's it. You got people who are alive today, think they're so smart, think they know everything. Oh, would love to debate with you and have these, these theological debates and all that other kind of stuff. None of that matters. Because what I'm talking about you, every eye going to see. All we got to do is wait till you die, and you'll see I was right. And I tell you right now, I'm right. You wrong, and we'll see. Do you think you can afford to take that chance? There is no way. I'm, I'm, my, I, I am so glad that I am ever ready. You ever heard that term? I am ever ready. I'm always ready. And that's how you do it. You get saved. You, you, you see, once you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you're good. So all of this stuff I'm talking now, you ain't, your heart don't need to be beating fast. You don't need to be, oh, Lord, I need to do this. I need to, no, you don't already did what's necessary. You have made your reservations to Holy Ghost Hotel. Hallelujah. <laughs> you're all ready. But now if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this sermon should concern you. Amen. Here's the third thing I want you to understand. People in hell are fully conscious and aware of where they are. They're conscious and they are aware of where they are. 
just as a person in heaven knows where they are and how they got there, the person in hell will know why they are and where they are. They won't be able to say that they never had a warning and they, that, that they were never warned because they will know that they had ample opportunity to change their ways. I, I think the tormenting part, I think fire may be... It, it may be literal, it may be symbolic, but I think it's the worst thing you can think about. I think there's going to be some stuff that's a lot more tormenting than the fire. Somebody say, what could be more tormenting than the fire? Knowing that all you had to do is accept Jesus' forgiveness. That could be tormenting. Knowing that your, 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 your book was in, your name was in the Lamb's book of life, but because you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it was wiped out. That's tormenting. And all of the chances you have. Tonight's another chance. You're on the stream right now, and you could turn it off because you're, you're freaking out, I don't want to hear this. Or you could pay attention to me and make some, some the, the choice of your life. The, the, the only choice that matters in your life right now is have you made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior? That's big. Now look at Revelations chapter 20. Revelations chapter 20. Now this is, I could preach an hour on what I'm about to show you, but I, I don't have time. This is new believers for people to get it, get some understanding, get some scriptures and, and go on. We can get deep in it a little bit later. But look at Revelations 20 verse 11. He said, I saw a great white throne. Now before I go home, go, go, go home, before I go on, the great white throne is just simply, the, it's a judgment of non-believers. Okay, so everybody's going to die, right? And then there are going to be two resurrections. There's going to be the resurrection of those believers, and, you know, you'll be clothed and meet Jesus in the air. And then the second res resurrection, you don't want to be a part of that, that second resurrection from the dead is where non-believers are going to be judged and, and you know, sentenced. And this is this, this judgment right here. All right, now listen to this about this judgment. Uh, this is the judgment of non-believers. Uh, who will be at this judgment seat? Everyone who has rejected God's offer of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Everybody that's rejected God's offer uh, of forgiveness through Jesus Christ, you will be at this place. The number of people that have rejected that offer Jesus is saying, I was the ransom. I paid the price for you to be free. The unbeliever said, I don't want it. The unbeliever said, I don't believe. They're going to be at this judgment. So why are they there? Because they did not believe in Jesus. Look at John 3, 18. They did not believe in Jesus. And the people who don't believe in Jesus and didn't receive what Jesus uh, had made ready for them or they will be at this judgment seat. This is going to happen. And, and, and uh, don't miss Sunday, because Sunday I'm going to talk to you about the signs of the time. I'm going to talk to you about everything that's happening right now and literally show you, I'll go back, I think in some cases, 50 years and show you how it constantly progressed to where we are right now. And, and the Bible prophesies that that generation will see the return of the Lord. We have not known what that generation or who that generation was, but we pretty much know it's this one. It's this one. He said here, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the, in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So he's condemned already. It, what a sad day. What a sad day to see the consequences of not believing. You know, people poke fun at preachers and all that other kind of stuff. And later on, you're going to find out that the most important job on the planet But they don't know it now. They don't know it now. God has an intent, and we have a decision. And the truth is that God never intended for any person to go to hell. He didn't even create it for that. How do we know that heaven and hell actually exist? In his series, The Reality of Heaven and Hell, Creflo Dollar takes a deep dive into the reality of heaven, hell, Satan, demons, and angels. God never intended for any 
person to go to hell. That place is reserved for Satan and his demons. God does everything he can to keep us out of hell, but he has also given us the ability to make a decision. If you have been born again and you, you have made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are heaven bound. The only choice that matters in your life right now is have you made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior? Get your questions answered with these seven messages. That's right, seven messages right now for a love gift of just 40 US dollars or more, plus shipping and handling. Don't miss out. Call the number on your screen or go to creflodollarministries.org and click eStore to get the whole series today. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. Engage with Christ on a deeper level, develop your walk with the Lord, and strengthen your faith. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art, custom-designed app. The new Creflo Dollar Ministries app gives you unlimited access to numerous features. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. The app puts you right in the sanctuary with live streaming of services, you can receive practical advice for applying the Word of God to your life every day with our daily devotionals. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. To get connected via the new Creflo Dollar Ministries app, visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. I pray that this broadcast blessed you today. I want you to pray about sowing a financial seed into this ministry. I also want to extend a special thanks to those of you who have remained our loyal partners, supporters, and friends. Your financial support goes a long, long way. Your donations help equip us with what we need to send this broadcast all over the world. And when you give to this ministry, you partner with us to reach people everywhere who are hurting and in need of the revelation of God's grace and love. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.